this is a challah. It's um, it's an egg bread that's been braided. It's sort of a traditional Jewish bread, but you can use any kind of egg bread or brioche bread that comes in a loaf. I'm just going to leave this to dry out a little bit, so when I mix it with a custard, it'll just absorb all that flavor. So the custard, six eggs, and I always try and crack the eggs on the board rather than on the side of the dish, so you don't get shells in them. I like to use extra large eggs, but you can really use large eggs, anything that you have around. Extra large eggs, I find, are better value. There's more egg per dollar. How's that for an esoteric fact? Okay. And the next thing is milk or half and half if you really want to be over the top. It's a cup and a half of whole milk or half and half. I want to keep my husband around for a long time, so I'll use milk. I'm just going to whisk it in. When I was thinking about this recipe, I wanted to make traditional French toast, but I really wanted to pump up the flavor. So challah does that, which is great, but also I wanted the custard to have more flavor. So what I'm going to do is, I'll show you, I'm going to add orange, which is a really traditional breakfast kind of thing, my handy dandy microplane, which I love. So I'm going to add a little bit of orange, maybe about a teaspoon. But really make this to your own taste. If you like more orange or less orange, play with it until you get it exactly right. And the next thing's vanilla. So about a half a teaspoon of vanilla and honey. Honey will sweeten it, but I think it sweetens it with more flavor than sugar. This white sugar really doesn't do anything for me. And mm, it does not look good. And the last thing is a pinch of salt. It's amazing how much salt makes a difference in a recipe like this. So now the custard has lots of flavor. When I'm going to soak the bread, it'll just absorb all that good flavor. I'm going to soak the challah in the custard just a couple of minutes on both sides. Just sort of hold it down so it gets nicely soaked. If you can soak it for five minutes, it's great. If you don't have the time and you're too hungry, it's okay. But the longer you soak it, and actually the drier the bread is, the better. I actually saw one recipe where you had to let it sit for half an hour. Now, just imagine that everybody's sitting waiting for breakfast, and you have to stand there for half an hour and let it soak. Forget it. So while that's soaking, let me get the butter. So I'm going to have about a tablespoon of butter. When I'm sauteing things, I want to mix butter and oil because I'll get the flavor of the butter with the high burning temperature of the oil. So about a tablespoon of oil should do it. That's perfect. Get it nice and hot. Seriously. So it's good and hot, but not burning. All right, in they go. I'm going to cook these for about three minutes on each side until they're nice and browned. And while that's happening, I'm going to soak the next slices of bread, which is about the same amount of time, three minutes. It works out perfectly, just like that. This is going to be so good with hash browns, turkey sausage, and then a treat for dessert. I think my husband's going to be thrilled. So I'm going to serve the French toast with a drizzle of really good maple syrup and maybe a dusting of confectioner sugar would be good. So these look like they're perfectly done. I'm going to put them on a sheet pan, put them in the oven, 